In this video, we're going to complete example three, and we're going to learn how to divide thirds. Now, there are two methods uh, we can use here. The first method involves either dividing or simplifying. The second method I'm going to show you involves cancelling. Now, I would just like to point out that on this slide, you only see three questions. We're actually completing six questions. There's another three questions on the next slide. So we will start with question A, and the method I'm going to use is the first method, and I'm going to divide. I'm going to divide my whole numbers separate to my thirds. So 12 divided 3 is 4, and 14 divided 2 is 7, so the square root of 14 divided the square root of 2 would be the square root of 7. So now I will show you the cancelling method for question A. In order to use the cancelling method, I need to split numbers up. So for example, 12, I'm going to split that into 4 times 3. For the square root of 14, I'm going to split that into the square root of 7 times the square root of 2. I'm going to keep the denominator the same. It's 3 root 2, but I'm going to write it as 3 times root 2. Okay, so I've got the exact same fraction because 4 times 3 is 12, and root 7 times root 2 is root 14. Now I can simply cancel. So I can cancel the 3's above and below, and the root 2 above and below, leaving me with 4 root 7. Now for question A, it's pretty obvious that the dividing method works the best. It was the quickest and the most simple method. What you're going to find is the method you use will depend on the type of question you get. Anyway, we'll move on to question B now. I reckon I can divide these quite simply. 45 divide 5 is 9. So root 45 divide root 5 is the square root of 9. And the square root of 9 is 3, so we can go another step. Now, I'm not going to bother with the cancelling method because I've already shown you how to do it. And it's quite obvious that the dividing method works best for question B. All right, moving on to question C. You might notice you really can't divide anything here. So let's start with the cancelling method. I'll split the root 12 into the square root of 4 times the square root of 3. 4 times 3 is 12. And then at the bottom of our fraction we have our 5 and we're multiplying this by the square root of 27. The square root of 27 is made from the square root of 3 times the square root of 9, because 3 times 9 is 27. So we can simply cancel the root 3s here, leaving us with the square root of 4 at the top and 5 times the square root of 9 below. Now the square root of 4 is just 2, so we can write that as 2. And for our denominator, the square root of 9 is 3. So we can write this as 5 times 3 below. And we get 2 over 15, because 5 times 3 is 15. So we've simplified question C using the cancelling method. And when I mentioned the first method, it involved dividing and also simplifying. So what do I mean by simplifying? Well, we could have actually used our calculator to simplify the square root of 12 over the square root of 27. All we need to do is ignore the square root signs and just go 12 over 27, which simplifies to 4 over 9. So we can rewrite this, and I will do it in green. We can rewrite it as the square root of 4 over 5 root 9. The reason I can do that is because 12 over 27 simplifies to 4 over 9. Now we know that the square root of 4 is 2, 
And we also know that the square root of 9 is 3, so this becomes 5 times 3. And 5 times 3 is 15, so we could have used the first method to come up with the answer as well. Alright, let's now move on to question D. you notice we've actually got some multiplication in here, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply first and divide last. So I'm going to have 5 root 24 at the top, because 12 times 2 is 24. And then I'm going to have the square root of 8 at the bottom. So can I use the first method? Can I divide these? Well, 24 divide 8 is 3. So we simply write down our whole number of 5. And then when we divide our thirds, we get the square root of 3. So the dividing method was nice and quick. I'm not going to bother with the cancelling method. So we've now got questions E and F. Now when you get quite large questions like this that obviously don't divide very well, I usually find that the cancelling method works best. So that's the method I'm going to use for these two. So starting with question E, rather than starting by multiplying, I'm actually going to focus on splitting the numbers up. So I really can't split up the square root of 7. But I can split up the square root of 6. I can make that the square root of 3 times the square root of 2, because 3 times 2 is 6. And then for my denominator, I've got a 3. And to make 56 is 8 times 7. So I'm going to multiply this by the square root of 8 times the square root of 7. I can actually split the 8 up as well, so I'm going to go an extra step. I'm going to keep everything the same except the square root of 8. I'm going to split the square root of 8 into the square root of 4, multiplied by the square root of 2, and I'll keep the square root of 7 the same. We can now do some cancelling. I can cancel the square root of 2 above and below, as well as the square root of 7 leaving me with the square root of 3 above and 3 times the square root of 4 below. Now, this is the same as just writing 3 times 2, because the square root of 4 is 2, and then I get the square root of 3 above, and 3 times 2 is 6 below. Okay, now moving on to question F. Once again, I'm not going to multiply the terms together, I'm actually trying to split them apart. So I'll start with the 6 here. I'm going to turn that into 3 times 2, and then multiply it by the root 3. And then looking at the 4 root 5, I'm going to keep them the same. I'm going to keep it as a 4 and as a root 5. The reason I split the 6 into 3 and 2 is because I could see a 3 below. All right, looking at our denominator now, I've got the square root of 20. So what am I going to split that into? I'm going to split that into the square root of 4 times the square root of 5 for a couple of reasons. First of all, 4 times 5 is 20. And also I can see a square root 5 above, so I would like one below as well. I then multiply this by 3 because of my 3 here. And I need to split up the square root of 48. Now, I've got the square root of 3 above. I'm hoping that when I split up the 48, I, I get a 3. So I'm just going to grab my calculator. What's 48 divided by 3? And I get 16. That sounds really good. So I can split that into the square root of 3 times the square root of 16, because 3 times 16 is 48. Let's now do some cancelling. I can cancel these root 3's here, I can cancel the whole number 3 here, as well as the root 5's. Very nice. Alright, for the numerator I've got a 2 and a 4, so 2 times 4 is 8, equals 8 above. And for my denominator I've got the square root of 4, which is just 2, and I'm multiplying this by the square root of 16, which is just 4. Now, 2 times 4 is 8, so we've actually got 8 over 8, which equals 1. 
Very nice. Question F simplified very nicely. Anyway, that concludes our video on example three. Remember to read the description below for links to work booklets that relate to this video.